My name is Tommy Walker and I played the character of the boyfriend. My name is Freya and I played the role of the girlfriend. My mindset going into the audition process was f fairly simple. I was lucky enough to have the character written for me. Uh, so all I had to do was show up at the audition and uh, I helped out Nick and Mike uh, with the uh, casting process. We went through a whole bunch of uh, actors, actresses to um, test the chemistry and uh, it was just a lot of fun. My mindset going into the audition was that I was quite intrigued. Um, I didn't really know that much about the film before I went in. Obviously, of course, I was nervous. It was actually my first ever audition from after graduating from drama school, one that I will always remember. I was nervous, but I was also really intrigued and excited as well. I feel like what helped me land the role was probably my fourth wall breaking stare that I have. It's a, uh, I could look like a nut job, a really good one too. A really good nut job. What I feel landed me the role was probably um, the fact that I connected with Tommy very quickly. We bounced off each other really, really well. So I think what really connected Freya and I, really, the like the root of us being like so cool with each other on set, was because I do such an awesome Gollum impression, Smeagol from Lord of the Rings. I think I, I think Freya gave her heart to me after she heard that, and I think ever since then. It was amazing. She was like, Master the Darby's wicked, tricksy, foosh. Ever since I did that, that was it. It was more, it was like a love connection right then and there. You could just tell that love was in the air. Yeah, he had me literally from the uh, from the first time he did the. I'm, I'm not even gonna do it. I was gonna try and do the impression. Master, <laughs> Trixie. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> it was love at first sight from there. I think it's because I have a thing for um, in real life, you know, like cartoon characters. So when I met Tommy and he was just normal Tommy, it was just, you know, I just thought, oh yeah, cool. As soon as he did that, boom, he had me on my, he had me on my knees, so, yeah. Oh, and what made me decide to be a part of the project, I mean, it's just clear box, you know. These guys are, they're, they're fun to work with, and uh, whenever you get an opportunity to work with clear box, you, you take it. What made me want to do the, do the film was just the sheer fact that when I went into the room, I met the guys, I instantly connected with all of them. I had just had a really good feeling about it. I left and I was just like, this is gonna be something that's gonna be really, really good. So yeah, I just knew straight away, as soon as I met them, I was like, I wanna work with you guys. This character is not related to me at all. Not not at all. Um, but the method that I used was, uh, I just, there's, there's one, actually one particular scene in the, in the short film where uh, I sit down on the couch and I look over to my left and my girlfriend is right there and I'm looking all distressed. I reverted back to uh, my grandmother's passing away uh, to, get in, to get into character that way. I don't have, really have a method. I'm not, I'm not the method guy. I just like to be in the moment. I like to make sure I get myself in that headspace and try to perform the best I can. Well, I actually, yeah, I did use a few methods to get into this character because the character isn't really as relatable to me. There's certain aspects of her that are very relatable, um, you know, when we, you know, when she is in the relationship and they're happy and in, in love, that's very relatable to me because I'm a very loving, giving person in life. I wouldn't cheat on my boyfriend and do what the character did, so I had to kind of find tools to use, um, you know, like with the texting and like the personalization that I used for Tommy in certain points and just trying to get into the character, yeah, in that way. Um, personal experiences that I've had in life um, before I went on set. Like, I prepared myself to feel certain ways and then I went on and shot the scene. I love this character because this character was just fun to play. It was just fun to play. Uh, I like how, how he was structured. I like how Nick structured out the character and how he structured out the story. <laughs> I love the fact that she's so ballsy. The fact that she sits there and there, they eat ice cream, or they're on the like the sofa together watching TV, and she's texting another guy. That's just like it's crazy. I love that about her, but also at the same time I hate that because I think you because that guy loves you and he is so nice. So I probably love and hate that about her. 
I don't hate anything about this character. Really, if I if I had to pick anything to hate, it's just that the guy's the, the guy's nuts. The guy's a psycho, and he's a spoiler alert. He's a murderer. That's the, that's the only thing that I would say no. But otherwise, fun character to play. The easiest thing. Uh, was the fact that I got to stuff my face with a full box of chocolates. It was actually Valentine's Day, so uh, so we had like the full a full big thing of chocolates that we ate on every single take, and the ice cream. I think that that was uh, it was nice doing the, the romantic dinner scenes because I just got to stuff my face. The easiest scene for me to do uh, was staring at the camera. Uh, during that little montage where I'm, I'm looking and then we, we, we see these, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend played by Freya, uh, my girlfriend is, is on her phone. Uh, staring at the camera was the easiest because it didn't require much movement, but in my mind, I was, I, I really, in that moment, I was thinking about my ex-girlfriend and remembering her wasn't a good relationship, didn't end too well. And I just used all of that pent up anger and rage to portray and what you see on film. The hardest was the treadmill scene uh, where I'm running on the treadmill. That was difficult because I'm running. And at that time I wasn't running for a while. I, have, I don't think, I don't remember the last time I ran on a treadmill. So I'm running on the treadmill, I have to act, and then I have to look over to, my, to the side, I have to go, and then I have to smile at Freya, and then I have to look back, and then I have to, like that, and it was just, it was just difficult to try and juggle those, those different things. It was, it was a very difficult scene for me to do. It was fun, but that was the most difficult. Yeah, the biggest challenge for me, I think, was the, uh, was the death scene. Um, you know, I've never been murdered before. I've never seen anyone get murdered. Um, and I think also like what you don't see is that, you know, Tommy is actually in real life an absolute sweetheart and, you know, he doesn't want to lay a finger on me, he doesn't want to hurt me in any way. Um, so it was, you know, it was everything that went with that. It was the fact that we kind of had to choreograph it and, you know, you want to make it look realistic. You don't want to make it look, you know, because something like that can actually look very, very poor and very, very under-rehearsed. So, it was a massive challenge, but it was, an, it was an amazing learning experience. And, you know, me and Tommy had to completely trust each other. You know, we had to really put our trust in each other to do that scene because, you know, there's, it, there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of physical things going on. So, yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge, um, but the most exciting challenge out of all of them. The death scene. Had a lot of fun doing that. It was a very difficult scene to do. Uh, I didn't want to hurt Freya at all, and uh, I, I, I know sometimes I can get a little bit too into the into the moment, and so therefore I knew I was like I remember asking Freya. Uh, so have you done ever done like any uh, any com combat training or something, anything like that? And she was like, well, yeah. And she was like, yeah, well, yeah, kind of, kind of. I was like, all right, because I haven't, I haven't done that. I only knew like one thing, and that was the the victim is the one that's in control. So I so it put that put put my mind at a, a little ease where uh, it, I knew that I didn't really have to do much. She was gonna do a lot of the work to, to be, uh, well, you'll see in the film how she dies. But uh, I remember after shooting that, the, we did, I, think, I, I really remember we did three or four takes of the death scene. And after the first one, I didn't feel good. I, I, I just didn't feel good. It's just, it's really, this is the first time I'm actually ever killing somebody on camera. Uh, and to do it in such a personal way uh, by, well, like I said, no spoilers, but the way that I do it, it's such a personal way that uh, it, it, when you're in that moment, something hits you and it's, it doesn't feel good. But when they say cut, okay, that, okay, we got it, then it's great. Then it's great because I don't have to do it again. But that was, that was, it was, it was a fun scene after the fact that we, after the fact that, that they called cut and we didn't have to do it again. It was a very, very personal death and, and, and yeah, it was a little weird. I actually think that a lot of, you know, strong feminist independent women would like this character. I think that a lot of the time that, you know, in society, and I'm not, you know, not, not stereotyping, but you know, a lot of men kind of 
you know, or with cheating, a lot of people, you know, it's always normally portrayed as the men doing the cheating. It's very, very different for women. You know, it's not seen as much on screen for women to do it, which in a way is very empowering for women. So I think that, you know, girls are gonna, yeah, I think women are gonna relate and like my character. The type of person that's going to love this character, the Joker fans. The, the fans that love the Joker, or those direct, like the Hannibal Lecter fans, or the, uh, you know, the just whatever crazy, sadistic, twisted minded character that they see on camera, like, oh, that is cool. They're gonna like this character. That's how they're gonna like this character. Those are the people that are gonna like this character. Do you know what? Working on a silent narrative is something that I would recommend for every actor to do. Um, because I feel that, you know, you can shoot something and People just say the lines. It's so easy for someone to say, I love you, but there's no meaning behind that. And I think that when you do a silent narrative, you have to, everything has to come from within, you know, everything's tighter and what you're doing with your emotions, what you're doing with your facial expressions and body language tells the story. So you have to, you have to as an actor, just be so in the moment. And I think, you know, it's so easy for actors when they have lines, they just say the lines, but sometimes the lines don't match up with the with how they're actually feeling so for me it was just so great to be able to you know take that time to actually feel it and try and express everything through my body and you know, through my eyes and through my face um and it was yeah of course it's it's you know it, it's diff it's difficult as an actor you have to really really be in it but it's something that you know every actor should be Doing it, doing, doing any scene. Um, so no, it was, it was great. Wow, that's that's a good question. Okay, uh, working on a silent film with no narrative, no dialogue at all. That's different. I have not done a film like that before. Um, I'm so used to being able to exchange dialogue one on one with another actor. The way that I ended up just, or the way that I, I. I tried my best to perform with no dialogue, it's all expression. Uh, so you have to keep in mind that even though you're not saying dialogue, your face is telling the dialogue. So that's, that was something, that was more of an acting challenge for me, to be able to uh, look at Freya's character and be like, wow, I'm, I am in love with her. Not say that I'm in love with her and not try and make that, uh, not try and have the audience hear it through, through words, but to see it in my face. And that, that was not difficult, but a challenge and different. Uh, something I'm not used to, but it was a lot of fun to do. It was one of those things that I had so much fun, but at the same time, we had such a level of professionalism. It was like everybody was on the same wavelength, you know, I went in there and, you know, I have been on sets before where I feel, you know, you, you know, as you can feel, you know, as, as the newbie because the, all the guys had worked together before, they had a completely, you know, they'd already formed a relationship. Um, but it was great, they made me feel so comfortable. From literally the first minute I walked in, there was this comfortability level which allowed me to kind of go places and, you know, get into my character more. Um, we just had, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Everyone was working really hard because they wanted this project to be great. And I think hopefully, if, you know, when you see it, you'll, you'll agree. Our experience was great. You know, Mike and Nick and Caleb, they both, all, all three are just as professional as possible. Elaine, makeup artist, I love her. She's just fantastic and she's really good at it. She's like really good at it. And she doesn't even know it, that's the thing. She's just, but she's really good at it. And working with Freya, that was a total breath of fresh air for me. You know, she was just a lot of fun. Uh, in this business, you meet a lot of actors, actresses that are a little bit, you know, snooty and stuck up. But Freya was as open as possible and she allowed herself to be able to work. To, to, to work with me on, on such a, and be so com in such a comfort level. Uh, I, I was very comfortable working with, with Freya. When you're a director, you know, to also be very, very open and be able to read people and, you know, you see it, you know, time and time again, you know, it's like, it's communication. They're really good at communication. They're really good at making you feel, you know, very, very comfortable. And yeah, they're just, 
we, we were just all on the same wavelength, wavelength. We just connected very, very quickly. And that's one of the things I love most about the project because I now see these guys as my friends as well, which, which is great. I was able to connect really quickly with, with Nick because I've worked with him prior. We worked on a, a short film print, it was a comedy, and we worked together and uh, we've always kept in touch since. So we, we, we know how, how we work, we know, we know each other and uh, it's on a friendship level and on a business level. So it's really, it, it was very easy to, to, uh, to, work, to, to, to work with each other again. Uh, to work with Freya, like I said, it was easy. It was just completely simple, uh, total joy to work with her. I would work with her again. And uh, it, everything, everything just went so, so smooth. I was so happy about it. What makes a good scene partner is um, somebody that you can trust. You have to put so much of yourself into somebody else. And if you haven't got that trust, you're not, you're both not going to be in the scene. You both have to be fully committed into the scenes to put your, yeah. So you have to put your trust into someone and feel confident that you can go, you know, that you can go to these places that aren't necessarily natural to you at that given time. Um, so for me, a good scene partner is somebody that I can fully trust. Also is as equally committed as I am. Um, and yes, somebody that also just wants the same, you know, has the same objective, which is that they want this project to be as good as how you want it to be. Really what I look for in a scene partner, uh, actress or actor, is somebody that I can really just vibe with off camera to make, because that, that helps me feel comfortable and saying, well, I, I, can, I can actually be vulnerable with this person. And I, I like to feel vulnerable with people. Us as, us as people in general, the gener like just generally, people are not, they don't allow themselves to be vulnerable. Oh, yeah. we'll do it again. And to be a good actor, from what I've learned, to be a good actor, you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable. And if you're working with somebody that's not allowing that to happen, then the scene's just not gonna work and there's not gonna be any, ma any magic. Uh, if you're working with somebody that you feel comfortable with and you can be vulnerable, vulnerable around and they can be vulnerable around you, the scene is going to work perfectly. So I think the ideal scene partner would be somebody that you're comfortable with and that you can allow yourself to be vulnerable around. I do have to admit when I first met him in the audition, before I even knew that, you know, that I was going to get killed, I just like, I looked at him and I was just like, yeah, he's like Dexter number two. So, I don't want to say Freya is like her character because her character is a cheater, and I don't know I don't know anything about that, um, and I can't I can't really say I'm like my character. I would say I'm more like my character, and I don't want to sound like too pretentious about it. But I say I would say that I have I have the, uh, the bit of a temper, and I'm sure that I that that fourth wall stare that you see in the film. I, I've done it to people before. I've heard of it. I, you know. So I would say that the, the little bits and pieces of, of the boyfriend character, uh, I definitely, I definitely have. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think Freya was really like her character, which is a testament to him, to, to her, I'm sorry, which is a testament to her. I think that the viewers are going to be very, very surprised um, because when you see, like, it starts and ends very differently and I think that I'm not going to spoil anything but I think you're going to be surprised at the, yeah, at the turns and things. I'm going to let you watch it and see. The viewer will be thinking, what did I just watch? What happened? And there is a twist at the end of this film that I've shown many people, uh, even in my, uh, my, my one of my one of my college classes, we, we my my professor showed this uh, this film, and one of my one of my classmates was like at the end was like, so it, there's a twist at the end of it. Uh, they're just they're really going to I think they're going to be like, what what did I just watch? I think it's going to be it's it's really it's just um, it's fantastic it's fantastic. I think what's going to surprise people is that the film starts and ends very differently. You start to watch it and you think that it's going to be, you know, this rom-com of a roller coaster, and it actually ends in a complete different genre, which is very, very interesting and fascinating. I think that's what 
people are going to love about it as well that you know they start watching something and it goes from like zero to a hundred in a very very different way so I think that that's going to be what surprises them the most. What's going to surprise people about this film is that there's no dialogue but the film is just not boring. There's a lot of films out there that there are there's no uh, dialogue between characters and it's just boring. There is nothing boring about about this. Nothing boring about Before I Go. No dialogue, no narrative, nothing. People are going to love it and they're not going to find it boring like other silent films that are out there. Hi guys, I am Freya Lund. My name is Tommy Walker. I played the character of the boyfriend on the short film Before I Go. Please go and check out our film Before I Go at clearboxpictures.com. Check it out.